Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Inside Cello. In this episode, I will be talking about the staccato bow movement of the right hand. And to do that, I will try to give recommendations on how we can practice and perform the Cotelli Sonata in D major. Before I start giving recommendations on Locatelli Sonata, I want to explain the staccato bow movement of the right hand. Staccato movement of the bow hand includes um, semicircle motions like this, to the left or to the right. If I am doing up bow, I do the circle towards left. Here, semicircle. If I am doing the staccato bow motion on down bow, I use the semicircle towards right. And that semicircles are always connected to each other. Let's try it with the bow. Yes, I'm doing semicircles. It's the right, it's down bow. Now I'm doing semicircles to the left, it's up bow. right now because I double the notes. There is a reason for that. The reason is that I don't move my arm towards right or towards left. So how do I do that? I use my elbow. I always make sure that not only I use my entire arm doing the semicircles but also paying attention to uh, my elbow for moving either towards right or towards left. Let's see. Um, let's start with up bow. Okay, now I use, I focused, I use my entire arm, but I focused on my elbow to be able to move towards left. With the same circles of uh, the right hand, and the direction of the semicircles is the left side of me. And now I am uh, doing the circles, the semicircles towards the right with the down bow. If I don't use my elbow, if I don't focus on moving my elbow towards the right, this is how it sounds. I think you can practice like that a little bit to make sure that you learn the semicircle motion, but in the end you have to um, include using your elbow for moving your arm towards the right or the left. Another important uh, point of doing the staccato with your right hand is um, to make sure the upper part of your right arm here, especially, is really comfortable and really relaxed. And focus on having here this muscle uh, relaxed. Let's start with the down bow. Semicircle to the right. I am moving with my elbow and I feel here upper side of my right arm is really comfortable. Now I'm gonna switch to the left up bow. My semicircles are going to be towards the left. fingers after all and I tell my students imagine as if the bow is extension of your hand and your arm so uh, hold your bow in a way that it feels like it is part of your body so is it harder to make those uh, gestures fast no it's not you have to work on it um, at a slow tempo and you have to succeed in each step. First step is to be able to make the semicircle motion to the right or to the left with your right arm to the right. 
It is down bow. To the left is up bow. Let's see. To the right. To the left. And of course, we don't double each note we play. And for that, we use our elbow to move either towards right or towards left. Let's try it. Semicircle to the right with my entire arm and I make sure I use my elbow to move the ball. In the end, I am not doubling each note I play. Now, semicircle to the left because it is an up bow motion and again, I use my elbow to make sure We have to hold the ball comfortably and our fingers um, need to be in contact with the ball. before if you do it in a slow tempo and each step I told you is completed and you're comfortable with completing the each step you need to learn in time you will realize that staccato bow motion is really uh, not as hard as you think it is let's see so what's the difference between doing this staccato movement uh, between in a fast tempo and a slow tempo? So I'm playing it in a slow tempo and I'm doing it in a fast tempo. I think you teach it to your muscles. So I really don't think I can think fast enough to say to myself, okay, so you go to the left and your arm is very comfortable, your upper arm. There is no way I can think that way as I'm playing. But if you practice in a slow tempo, uh, in the uh, way it is supposed to be, in the fast tempo, you will be able to play it without even thinking about it. Um, I don't even think about it anymore. But believe me, when I was a young cellist, I really spent some time on learning the staccato movement. As a cello teacher, I always tell my students at a young age, if you learn certain techniques, uh, in the way they are supposed to be, in the way they make you comfortable. Later in life, when you start playing uh, different compositions from cello repertoire, and different compositions require a variety of uh, cello playing techniques, you are going to be happy with your playing because um, if you can't play certain uh, compositions and if you feel like they are too challenging for you, playing the cello becomes really frustrating. And I think this is really sad because cello is a great instrument. Learning the cello requires long time. And if you learn stuff in a way they are not supposed to be, um, it becomes frustrating later in life. So I don't want that to happen to young cellists because 
For years and years now, I teach the cello and all the students are really special for me and I want them to be happy with their life, cello life and their life as a musician and I want them to enjoy making music with their cello. Now, I would like to show you how I convert the information about staccato bow I give to you to do locotele sonata. This is the first motif, 16 note groups. It is up bow, so that means the second circle is going to be towards left. side of my right arm and I feel it really really relaxed this 16th note motif is presented more than one time I think three times so each time I want to do crescendo the first one the first group of the 16 note figure is on the upper part of the bow, one fourth of the bow I try to use. And then the second one, I use the upper half of the bow. And obviously I play E natural. Um, at a higher uh, dynamic than the D natural and then for the last one I use my entire arm and each time I use the and E natural there are eight note figures I use my almost entire bow to come to the tip of the bow. D natural, I came to the tip. With E natural, I'm at the tip, almost at the tip again, because I want to use a bigger bow. moment of this sentence and it is at the frog here I use I recommend fingerings that includes uh, the change of strings because I want to do the decrescendo more effectively as effectively as I can I think this fingering not only helps doing the crescendo but also helps cellist to give more color to the composition. So I will start from the beginning. important uh, musical gestures we can um, do as we are performing Baroque compositions is to uh, express the contrast here. So there is a difference between piano and forte and I want to emphasize it. Uh, because it's a borrowed composition and in this sonata, especially in the first moment, you're gonna hear a lot of examples of that. So the same motif, melodic line, is performed twice successively. So how we can do it um, more interesting? This is the first one. I use the entire bow and I'm on the A string. 
So for the second one, I say it to Tim and not only I use the D string, the second string, but also I use piano dynamic. Now from now on, and one more information I want to give you here, the staccato in the same bow we do 16 note figures. Not only we do staccato, but also we do it in different strings. That means we need to arrange the level of our right arm accordingly and fast enough because this is going to be played fast. Here we do crescendo. between the strings, even uh, the neighboring strings, because moving your arm comfortably enough is what makes your right arm relaxed and strong in, in terms of cello playing abilities. So, I made a mistake intentionally and I didn't really uh, change the level of my right arm as much as I can. Believe me, it is really hard. I feel really tense and uncomfortable right now. So I'm going to move freely my right hand. Okay, I feel much better and I hope I played much better. 
Another tricky uh, part here is two. Change the bow from up bow to down bow quickly enough. That means you need to change the direction of the semicircles from left to the right and really fast. To the left. Right. Left. Now let's play the entirety. The same descending melodic line of eight uh, sixteen notes is repeated many times here, and to be able to make the crescendo effectively, and I divided those uh, bows. <laughs> To me, yes, thumb position playing a natural here, thumb position is not that easy, but once you get used to it and you put your hand in one position and never change it, never rearrange it as you are on this position, you will find out that it is really not that hard. And I still couldn't play it. Here is the first position of the thumb positions for many many years. If we are practicing the Locatella Sonata by now, we played here at the thumb position for a long time. So it is easy to find for our left hand. Our left hand already memorized it. So, I'm sorry about that. And with the shift here, your left hand needs to go before your right hand. Meaning, um, you start traveling towards the new position on the fingerboard on the up bow. And the down bow is going to be the new note. because you are going to play I think six 16 notes in one up bow and one 16 note in a down bow I know it is hard to imagine 
you are playing in a fast tempo, you are playing a 16 note passage, but when you practice it slow and you use the um, off time of each note, your left hand learns uh, when to shift between the position of the fingerboard of the cello in the right time, even in fast music. <laughs> to use the trill between first and the second finger here and they're close and I use my left arm as I change position another tricky shift here and of course E natural and D natural first finger E natural third finger D natural and of course I do not use either of my fingers to shift I use my tongue secretly I guess it's not a big secret anymore again as I always say this is the first position of the tongue positions gestures with my right hand. It is for uh, the articulation of the right hand by the There are also divisions, of course not in the music and not as I am performing. I don't want audience to hear that, but I call it mental division here. I mentally divide uh, each time I change the string. I divide it and divide it. tempo of uh, the composition and it makes everything much easier <laughs> Mom. 
because they are identical and in the borrowed times it is really common to make forte and piano dynamic success here i play uh, on the C string and i think i talked about it in our vision video i turned my cello towards left because i want to have enough space on the right arm side <laughs> To be able to play more comfortably on the A string, I turn my cello towards myself on the A string. And you look at it, starts. One more tip I want to give about this uh, very first 16 note groups start from the string. Meaning, use the um, bigger semicircle on the first. 16 notes. Use the uh, lowest uh, level of your arm, right arm. Believe me, you can't do it really with a big gesture, so it is never going to be too big of a right hand movement if you are worried about that. When I do it from the string, the first note is strong enough for the rest to follow the first note. adjusted according to the level of the string and the first grouping of the 16 notes is on the A string up bow meaning that we are going to do the semicircles towards left so why do I start here with a down bow at the tip because I have lots of 16 note figures to go and I need a bigger bow. Let's see, see if I can make it. No, I can't. No, it's really hard to do that. So I'm at the tip. And from the string, I do the biggest. Um, gesture of the staccato with my right hand on the F sharp and here to the right I make a semicircle with my right arm because I really changed the level of my arm between the strings of the cello um, quickly and at a big distance <laughs> Meaning that to do left, I to do left with the circle, I need to really uh, lower the height of my hand. Here, I even use the fourth string. Can be really challenging. 
If you want, you can change your position. You can shift between the notes. I don't because I have a big enough hand for that. If you don't, um, it really doesn't matter. It is really not hard to shift between the positions. I keep my first finger on the A string. which is not even written in the music but I find it really helpful to put myself in the right position for the double stops of the uh, next melodic line because I'm gonna play F sharp anyways here. with my thumb finger and of course and I'm gonna play double stops and I need to really keep my hand on the right position so each note is connected to each other uh, and you have to really plan what you are going to play ahead of time like you have to really think about how you are going to shift which finger you are going to use so that you can play this uh, double stops as comfortably as you can. Again, I keep my first finger on the string. You can shift if you want. I don't. I don't need to. But if you need to, there's nothing wrong with that. And the second one I play piano, so I guess I need to play the first one uh, at a bigger dynamic. I'll do my best. Here, uh, the piano dynamic I do at the uh, middle of the bow, and I don't use a big bow for that. Here, another. I know how to make it, believe me. So here again, your reference note, you are shifting from A natural to the G natural and B natural. And you are going to use the D natural, uh, which is not again written in the music, but it is a reference note. And it is really easy to find, as I always say. It is the first position of the thumb position. You shift in the same bow, and I recommend you to use your arm, your arm, really, really actively, and entirely shift the positions with your left arm. Your first finger, you can play it. Another staccato melodic line is at the end of the first movement of this sonata, and this staccato movement is, I think, the essential uh, motif of the melodic lines used in the sonata. I uh, do it from the string, meaning that I do the first 16 note with my arm with a strong and big gesture so that I can um, gather enough strength for the upcoming 16 note figures. <laughs> Seventh 
the semicircles from left to the right on time fast enough again <laughs> Thanks for listening. I hope the information I give you can be helpful. This is the end of another Inside Cello and I am hoping to meet you in the next episodes. Bye-bye.